hello students and welcome back to the online class of electronic devices having subject code as 18EC33 so today we are going to study about a different type of a diode called as pin diode so the most commonly used diode which is used as a photo detector is pin diode or pin diode now the structure of this pin diode is as shown in figure where we have the p region n region and i which is nothing but your intrinsic region we also have a resistor r and voltage e and we observe that this pin diode is reverse bias now if we draw the energy band diagram for the spin diode then it would look something like this where we have the p region n region and the i region with reverse bias voltage e now as we observe this energy band diagram the fermi energy levels are split and then there would be electric field which is going to be established in the depletion region that is in the intrinsic region in the negative x direction so here if the light is incident on the p side then electron hole pairs are generated as a result of which the electrons from the p diffuses into i and due to the presence of electric field the electrons are drifted towards the n region not only this now when the electron hole pairs or ehps are generated in the i region due to the incident light what would happen is the holes will be sent to the p side and the electrons will be sent to the n side now this again happens due to the presence of electric field in the negative direction which i have already spoken about similarly now when the light is incident on the n side then what should happen the electron hole pairs are again generated in this case as a result of which the holes diffuse through i region and get drifted towards p now let us talk about some of the important parameters of pin diode or photo detector so the first one is the response speed now what is response speed response speed is nothing but how fast the photo detector device would respond to the incident light so what is the response speed response speed is the measure of how fast the photo detector would respond to the incident light now this response speed depends on a parameter called as the width of the depletion region now the width should be large enough so that the incident photons are absorbed in the width region or in the w region rather than n or p so now if you consider pin diode which was explained in the previous slide we observe that the intrinsic region that was considered to be the depletion region the width of that was w and that was larger than p or n why is that it is because if the width is not large enough then the incident photons will be absorbed in n or p but we don't want that to happen what we want to happen is we want the incident photons to be absorbed in the w region itself and for that reason we make sure that the width w is large enough by now we know that when the electron hole pairs are created in the depletion region then there is electric field established now this electric field is going to sweep the electrons to the n side and the holes to the p side now since the drift occurs in a very short time the response speed or response time is fast and these kind of diodes where carrier multiplication takes place in depletion region are also called as depletion layer photo diode however w should be approximately chosen since if w is very wide then what would happen is most of the photons will be absorbed by the depletion region thereby increasing the junction capacitance and sensitivity moreover if the width again exceeds beyond some particular value then the total time taken to the carriers to drift out of depletion region is also going to increase 
So in order to control the width of depletion region, what we do is we make use of pin photo detector. Now here, when I was talking about PI and diode, I told you that we have P region, I region and N region, where I region is nothing but your intrinsic region or pure region, isn't it? So what you need to remember here is that this I region that I was talking about need not be truly intrinsic as long as the resistivity is high. That is, there can be some amount of dopants or impurities present into it. But we need to make sure that the dopants are not very high. Because if you add more and more dopants to the intrinsic conductor, then there won't be any difference between intrinsic and extrinsic. Isn't it? So we don't want that I region to become completely extrinsic. And for that reason, we say that the I region need not be truly intrinsic as long as the resistivity is high because we know that in intrinsic the resistance is very high. Thus I region can be grown on N type substrate and P region can be obtained by ion implantation. Next, now when the device is reverse bias, what happens is the entire applied voltage appears across the I region. If the carrier lifetime within the I region is long, Compared to the drift time, then what would happen is most of the photo generated carriers would be collected by N and P region. Then the next parameter that we are going to talk about is external quantum efficiency. So an important FOM or figure of merit for a photo detector is its external quantum efficiency eta q. Now which is defined as the number of carriers that are collected for every photon hitting the detector. So once a photon hits the detector, there are going to be carriers which are going to be collected. So this quantum efficiency or external quantum efficiency is a measure of the number of carriers which are going to be collected as a result of photon hitting the detector. Now for a photo current density JOP, now JOP is nothing but your photo current density. What we do is we collect JOP by Q carriers per unit area per second. Similarly, for an incident optical power density POP, the number of photons shining on the detector per unit area per second is POP by H nu. And hence we have a figure of merit that is external quantum efficiency eta q which is defined as shown in this particular formula. It is JOP by q the whole divided by POP by H nu. Now here we talked about the generation of photo current when sufficient amount of light is incident on the device. But what in case of low level optical signals? So if low level optical signals are to be detected, it is desirable to operate the photodiode in avalanche region. Now why avalanche region? Because in this particular region, each photogenerated carrier results in significant change in current because of avalanche multiplication leading to gain and efficiency of more than 100%. So what you need to remember here is APDs or avalanche photodiodes are going to be used as detectors in fiber optic systems. So that's all for today. We shall continue or meet in the next class. Thank you and have a nice day.